Okay, this is a very long manga. It's like 300 fucking chapters, but every chapter is only like four pages. But I will keep this as short as possible because I don't know if you can hear my fucking nose and they got them sick as a bitch. Being sick is not an excuse not to make videos. I know I have a decently long streak of fucking daily posting. I'm not finna fuck it up just because I'm sick, my nigga. That being said, and even though I said I was gonna keep it short, even though I said I'm gonna keep it short, this is really a fucking slice of life anyways. So by nature, I'm always keep these stuff type of fucking shows short i don't know why i call it shows it's obviously a fucking manga whatever anyways i don't know if you tell about the fucking title manga is pretty much just about a bitch okay i need to chill out on that word bro i told myself i was gonna chill out on the cursing but like fuck it's just kind of hard to stop when it's already became like second nature to me you know whatever basically she adopted the dude nah fuck it i'm cursing bro <laughs> fuck it it just sounds so awkward bro i'll leave the cursing out <laughs> when i get monetized my nigga till then i'm letting she rip on me anyways back to the fucking story she adopted a nigga forgot his name but it's gonna pop up like a thousand times anyway oh yeah it was uh minoru or something like that and for plot sake i'm not gonna say her name yet because she kind of keeps it hidden for a while but basically mc was in grave debt well not mc his family was in grave debt and they kind of just abandoned the nigga and left him with it but it's cool because the girl next door just decided to pay off the debt and adopt the nigga and pretty much the whole manga is just a romance between them but like a very slow romance obviously because it's 362 fucking chapters i guess this is the fucking benefit to reading manga i guess bro you can finally get to see the fucking endings of romance anime <laughs> because y'all know in romance anime motherfuckers be dragging that on and only get like a kiss at the end and that's a very rare chance at this point she didn't really love the nigga like she didn't have feelings for him she just thought he was cute like a little brother or something like she saw him as like it's not a sibling more of a pet if i'm being honest she's seen the nigga kind of like a pet but like not in the bad way more in the oh i have to take care of him and he's under me type way oh but yeah she's like madly in love with the nigga but like not romantically and she kind of acts like yandere but she's not romantically in love with the nigga but i guess yandere isn't like specific to romance it could be all types of love anyways basically they just live together obviously because she adopted the nigga i'm pretty sure he's like 16 or something but the thing about her is she's literally just hiding her whole fucking identity from the nigga i don't remember why i'm pretty sure she just did it because it's too embarrassing for him to know because she dead has to look at this nigga like he's a fucking god is <laughs> she talking about some oh i'm not important enough for you to have to worry about all that shit one of my favorite parts of this whole manga is just mc trying not to be spoiled because dude wants to get treated like a man and not just a fucking leech who's just fucking in it for her money she's stupidly rich by the way well i won't say stupidly rich but she is well off i guess which still means rich that's just what suburban people say they are so they don't get fucking i don't even know why suburban people say no we're just well off we're not rich nigga you rich quit the bullshit sometime later we get a small like flashback to the girl's past with him basically she didn't really know the nigga before she adopted the nigga or more like he didn't know her she was actually stalking the nigga but it's kind of weird i guess not that i mind but like how do you okay this is trying to sound weird but how do you stalk somebody not romantically i don't know bro whatever i guess also i don't know if you know this but uh it's illegal for her to own this nigga because his parents are still alive and he still has relatives and he hasn't signed like independence i guess i forgot what it was called and i don't even think he's old enough so you know them hanging out or him leaving out under her roof is kind of illegal especially because she is a decent amount older than him i know at the end of the anime we're not at the end but like around the end she was like 26 and he was 18 when she was 26 i'm not gonna do the math but like i feel like someone watching this knows the math so cool on you bro i'm stupid that's just eight years bro i don't know it's a sickness i'm telling you but basically time to time in the manga we get this little plot with the police obviously because she's illegal well not she's illegal oh fuck she's doing shit illegal because you're not supposed to have a 16 year old living in your house that isn't your relative anyways right after that one of mc's homies kind of finds out they're living together but he's chill with it forgot his name but his homie was cool if i sound a little different i just plugged up my nose so yeah it was either that or just keep sniffling i haven't snot run down my shit so i'd rather just plug my nose up then some weeks or whatever later i wasn't really paying too much about the time skips this little girl moves next door with her parents obviously i don't know why i had to say it like that anyways they're cops so you know minoru and girl 
I can't say her name yet because I haven't found it out yet. I have to keep it on the low low. But they're usually chill because obviously this isn't a fucking drama. So not much crazy shit happens. Despite me not talking about it much, this anime is... Why? Why? I keep calling it anime. I'm just so used to talking about anime and not manga. Even though this is probably my third manga video. Whatever. It's, despite me not talking about it, obviously this anime is wholesome as shit. And I can't lie. When shit wasn't happening, it was very hard for me to read this because, you know... I'm not the wholesome type enjoyer because that shit sometimes gets boring. I ain't gonna hold you in. Anyways, there comes a time and point when the MC starts falling for her. I don't know if she's falling for him at this point yet because she hasn't really said when she started liking the nigga. Obviously, it's romance, so she likes. <laughs> Obviously, it's a romance, so she started liking the nigga at one point, but I don't remember when it was. But yeah, obviously, MC starting to fall for her. He kind of already fell for her through like the first chapters, and I just now brought it up. But like, it doesn't start becoming a bigger plot point till now. A lot of the manga is literally him trying to ask her out. He literally said to her he loves her, but she thought it was in more of a family way. Like, the nigga confessed a couple of times, and she didn't get it till around the end of the manga. We're already 300 fucking chapters, and she don't get it yet. Now, these niggas have almost known each other for a year and he finally learns her name it was shiori he found it out by accident because in japanese shiori means bookmark and she was and he was saying have you seen my shiori and then she got fucking flustered because he called her out by her first name and apparently that's some crazy shit in japan and then that's pretty much how we found out her name even though these niggas have been living in the same crib for like half a year already do bro not like check the mail or nothing bro couple chapters later meet this dude not really important he kind of just is the same as shiori with his love for like forgot his name already what was that nigga minoro mc but like not in a romantic way kind of just like in a family way i guess another thing about this fucking story is obviously she's rich but mc notices wait <laughs> she hasn't left for work in the past months since i've been here I don't know why it took bro so long. But basically, long story short, she's been fucking skipping her job to spend more time with the nigga. And, you know, without working, you know, money gets low. They don't go broke, but like, you know, finances and shit like that. A big point of this fucking manga is that she overspends on this nigga and spoils the fuck out of him. So these niggas are doomed to go broke any minute because she's spending literally millions on this nigga every fucking day. Millions of yen, not USD, but like a million yen is still a decent amount of fucking money there's some more time later we found out mc opened his locker boom love letter from secret admirer so he showed shiori and she was like oh cool so i'm pretty sure she did have feelings for the nigga at this point she was literally on some like as long as he's happy i'm happy she would be cool with being just a mistress so you know when you're finna meet up with a girl who sent you a love letter or some shit you're supposed to go like solo and like talk it out N nah these niggas pulled up like five deep for what and basically this is the girl right here i forgot her name it was kind of like a little obviously she likes a nigga but she saw him with like 50 people so she couldn't ask him out right then but she sees shiori and she's like who the hell is this bitch she don't say it like that she wasn't mean but she kind of thinks that they're just siblings right now and i'm not gonna lie it gets to a point when everybody but mc knows she likes him and she's cool i guess i couldn't really care she's kind of just a side character in a romance where the mc already has a crush on the main heroine so like <laughs> who cares about her all right she wasn't a bad character though then some more time later mc gets a fucking letter from his parents who <laughs> who originally abandoned the little nigga but basically after like almost a year they just decide all right we're just gonna take the nigga back now literally after she paid off for their debts keeping this nigga you know up and shit they're just like all of a sudden all right we're gonna take the nigga away <laughs> literally they wanted to take the nigga to like brazil or something they're not completely in the wrong because they're still his parents even though they abandoned the nigga and it's kind of fucked up they just decide once the money problem isn't there anymore they don't want to get the nigga back and they even repay her bro like come on y'all niggas got money to go to fucking brazil not even go like vacation y'all have the money to move to brazil but y'all don't have money to pay her back like come on and these niggas even have a whole fucking go away party or whatever it's called but obviously this shit's not gonna end here while mc's on a taxi on his way to the airport he's just thinking about everything that happened so he just hops out that bitch then comes back Back home. I mean, yeah, it was kind of unfair that his parents just told him, hey, my nigga, you coming with us now after they left that nigga, but like, whatever. And they played off on some comedy shit, but this nigga's parents is really fucked up. But yeah, he just goes back and says, hey, can you please take me? And it's not under like his family telling him to move there. 
Now it's just him willingly declaring separation from his parents and moving in with her. Still illegal, I guess. But whatever. There's a lot of plot holes in this anime. Fuck manga on me. Then next day, he gets a call from his parents, obviously because a nigga didn't come. But his parents are kind of chill about it, talking about some. Oh, it's all right. If you won't come, move to Brazil. Then you just got to get married to her and get her fucking inheritance. Like, god damn, my nigga. Out of some money hungry fuckers. Like, they look he fucked up, but like... Niggas just played off on some comedy shit. Like, come on. Obviously, it's a little awkward when he sees all the niggas he just said goodbye to, but it's whatever. Niggas get over it pretty quickly. It wasn't very clear till now, but MC definitely fell in love with this nigga. I mean, what? Fell in love with this girl. Side note, that don't really matter, but you ever be reading or watching like a wholesome anime? You just be thinking like, damn, I want to punch this nigga or damn, I want to kill this bitch. But like, nah, I know serial killer shit. Just on some intrusive thoughts saying, cause you're like, shit going way too well, bro. I got to do something wrong. Yeah, now the FBI are on my page. Some months later, I don't even remember what the last thing I said was because I've literally been scrolling so long. My fucking fingers are burning. I'm lying. But still, after some time or whatever, they're walking around. Then one of Shiori's pictures of MC blows onto the middle of the frozen lake. Shiori's like, let me go cross it. But MC's like, nah, you're going to get hurt. So MC crosses it, falls in. Then Shiori goes to save him gonna do cpr on all that good things then she also falls in and he saves her I ain't gonna lie i hated that mc was hesitating here yes i know it's your first kiss and it's with a girl you like but come on my nigga she almost died because the nigga didn't do cpr fast enough because he was scared to touch her like come on bro it all worked out in the end though so we good just wanted to bring it up because i feel like it's a decent plot point I'm gonna keep this in like a few sentences basically mc asks out shiori again but obviously she doesn't understand what he's saying and thinks he's talking about in like a family way and not a romance way then mc goes tells his friends all about it talking about some i love her and whatever and then girl that liked him came up to shiori it was basically like i like the nigga yeah whatever shiori is way too passive so she just lets this shit slide even though i'm pretty sure she liked him at this point but she was just hiding her shit now some more time later i've been doing crazy time skits but whatever turns out his cousin pops up and it's basically just like all right I'm finna take him back now because I'm family and you have no reason to tell me otherwise or I will call the cops. She didn't say it like that, but like, you know, that's where they were heading. Also, if you don't know how it goes in this show, she obviously likes MC, even though they're related. But all is well in love and war. She already's kind of like, no, nigga, because I don't know. She be putting up that Sundar act. His cousin, by the way, be putting up that Sundar act. And basically, she's just like, nah, you're not fit for the nigga. Also, his cousin name is Hana. I don't know if I'm gonna call her that, but just to let you know in the future. Anyways, she always just like, whatever. I don't care. She's too passive. But MC obviously doesn't go back with his cousin. I don't know if I brought it up, but during some of the time I was skipping through this shit, MC had a birthday and he's 17 now. It's not too important, but you know, just let you know. More time later. This isn't really important, but girl who liked MC from earlier and not Hana found out that they're actually not siblings, whatever. Now she's like, oh, now we got to duke it out. It's kind of like a three-way romance with Hana, Shiori, and then bitch, I forgot her name. Obviously, we know him. <laughs> Obviously, we know MC's picking, though. It's a main fucking hero. She actually goes and asks MC out, but he's kind of fucking dense and thought she was talking about homie from earlier. So, yeah, her whole confession just went over this nigga head top. Boom, next school semester, after like a spring break or something, MC gets switched to a new class with this nigga. I probably butchered that but you know whatever anyways point is he's not important yet but like i wanted to bring him up because he does get important in a minute anyways some more time later we find out her last name is just kanamochi or something like that probably butchering it whatever just letting you know because it was a fucking built-up secret and we're already 208 chapters in. you finally learn her full name ain't gonna lie that matsuoko nigga is a fucking problem he doesn't really think on like feelings and shit he kind of just a straightforward ass nigga he literally went up to shiori and was like how do you feel about minoru and basically he was just trying to middleman it and try to get them together or is it wingman it's the same shit it doesn't matter obviously after everything that that nigga did they still didn't end up getting together because they trying to drag this shit out we only 200 in and then shiori and hana kiss i couldn't tell you what was happening here now some more time later some side characters meet up with hana side character namely being Matsuko and he's basically trying to hype her up now to ask MC out 
And she does. But he respectfully declines her. Talking about some, I just see you as my cousin. Which is right. This ain't Alabama, nigga. We ain't doing no cousin fuckers around here, cuz. And I'm not gonna talk about it. I low-key feel a little salty. I did like her a little bit. But then, after that, her and Matsuko kind of start seeing each other. And I'm not gonna talk about it. I'm literally gonna avoid all of that. Because that made me feel salty, bro. I don't know why. I don't hate Matsuko. He's just kind of, eh, you know? And Hana's kind of like, up there. You feel me? Whatever, though. Sometime later, they do the same shit they did, like... A couple hundred chapters ago and pull the CPR shit. It's whatever. Now I'm back with the bitch who had the crush on the nigga again. She just walks up to the nigga and smooths the nigga. Like, he don't got a whole bitch at the crib. Like, come on, man. They don't even get nowhere further with this. They don't even, like, bring it up or nothing. He don't even confront her feelings or nothing. He just pulls off some more comedy bullshit. Also, we found out here that she already's fucking 26. Now... Here's where them niggas finally proceed in romance. MC's just talking to his friends, talking about how much he love her and shit. Then she happens to overhear it. Boom, bow. Niggas is finally getting together after 300 chapters. We're on 300 and two. We still got 60 more chapters left. Next day after, niggas go on a date and shit. So these niggas are officially together now. Overall, let's just say the date was a success, my nigga. These niggas were dead ass making out for 10 whole pages. I rock with it. Then later, his parents show up. On some more bullshit talking about some make sure you get her in the bag we really need that money like come on bro like pops i haven't seen you in like a year my nigga you just come to me and say make sure i get some money for you like what's up yeah some scumbags then some even more time later mc finds out oh wait my bitch is a famous author that i liked so obviously now we find out her job she's a fucking author but she also happens to be one of mc's favorite authors and lie, this is the turning point this is where niggas start turning it up like these niggas they get to you know get inactive you know and i ain't talking about no smooch or nothing these niggas be in the sheets bruh and now finally i get to skip to the fucking end of the anime because nothing happens here in the next 40 chapters besides you know, lovey dovey couple bullshit. Final chapter is just a time skip three years later. Find out Matsuko and Hana still together and shit. But this nigga Minoru was married to her and she pregnant. Plus, she already got two kids. They got two kids and one on the way, my nigga. In three years? Y'all was getting active. That's a kid a year, bro. Chill. Bitch who loved him in the past just went on to be a fucking famous cook. Now she got money. No nigga though. Happy calm little ending. Made me want to read some more romance, but I just took a left field. You gonna see my next manga video, bro? Some crazy shit.